Hello everyone and welcome to another tour video. This one's actually of one of my newest bases on the Empire servers. I'm just going to basically take you on a run around the whole town area we've got set up here, but starting with my personal area. So at the moment I've just called it Casa Wheeler Skill. Couldn't come up with anything better than that, but you know, that's reasonable. This is the personal banner for this particular base. I sort of work from that banner with various color schemes for my different bases. So we've got a standard entrance here, a couple of wee fireworks go off, and some glowstone lights along the way, some creature skills here on the entrance, standard pressure plate, iron door. I uh, just started getting some cats in here. Oh, I've actually left my secret storage open there. So we storage under the wall section here. I've got a button here to close it from the inside, but the main switch is actually this locked chest here. Open that. And door's closed. Open it. And door's open. It's my general crafting and storage area here. I've got the furnaces, chanting area, bed, storage, ender chest, and doorways off to separate areas. This one we'll go through later. That's the automatic farm I built. This one leads to a friend's base here. That's Tiny One Rachel. That's her base over there. It's a small stone thing. A lot less fancy than most of her stuff. I've got my redstone ore and diorite floor here. Some lighting. This little trap door I've set up. Please use lever if you do. And you get dropped down to the ocean below. Should have mentioned actually this base is just up about above cloud level. Now obviously that leaves the doorway a bit useless to us, which is why we've got this button here. Which does a time delay reversal of that part. Now click the lever and reset the whole thing. We've got a tripwire which actually opens the door. It also activates the pistons, but that's not important. And then we're into the main castle walls. Uh, here you see we've got glowstone lamps all the way around. I've actually set up a wee switch here, so if I hit this, they go off. I've just put a slight delay between each one, just because I, I like the effect of the lights just coming on along around the whole ring. See in a second, they'll get back around to this side and it'll all be off. There we go. And obviously we want to keep them on most of the time, or else we're going to have mobs spawning all around the place. I've actually set up a similar lighting system on most of the levels here. I'm still working on this middle level. Actually decided to do the outside wall lights in the delay as well, which is why I've got a slight step up here, which is raising that. Not just from the outside, that'll look fantastic. Just turns these lights off sequentially, you can see it on the main outside wall. Inside you can just see the same sort of effect as below. And I've got yet again the same up top here. Very similar to the bottom of this one. Got the button, lights off, lights on. And up to the top of the walls here. This is actually inside a little tar section here. Head down to the main wall. Gonna look down over the entire town area. Got sort of a tree farm area here, mob farm here, a small farm area someone set up. And we've got the Iron Titan here which is uh, designed by Tango Tech. I'll have to put a link to that in the description. It doesn't work great on this server, it just works a little like any other iron farm really, but it does look great. Uh, this is my little chicken area. I've got them just laying eggs at the minute, going down into a whole silo stack of chests there. A cow breeder over there. A little well there. My automatic melon farm there. Very proud lad. We uses a couple of different delay systems hooked up to the timer just over there. It's actually the same timer that the sugarcane farm's on. That's uh, one designed by Mumbo Jumbo there. I'll put a link to that as well. And let's see. As you can see, a lot of this is still under construction, but you can get the general idea of how things are looking. Uh, you can see underneath there. That's our uh, switch now. I'm uh, going to have to try and put a lot of links to all the different designs on here. Most of it's really through Mumbo Jumbo and Tango Tech. Watched a few of their videos. Got a wee slime block door here. That's again from Mumbo Jumbo. Put a button activation on this side. See that comes down. Pressure plates there. And that's it closed again. Have a nice look at the outside wall here. Got obviously a wee 
turreted section here. Main wall there. I started off with just this section here and decided I wanted to have a higher back wall section and from that I decided I wanted it even bigger so I've expanded all the way across it's about a 70 by 40 plot inside there the moment we're out in the tree farm area we'll head back in pressure plates door open I like to try and close it from this side as well we'll have a closer look at some of those farms uh, yeah, I'm not going all the way around that there we go this is the one designed by Mumbo Jumbo. I've obviously compacted it. He's got it either side of a walkway. I've just put a glass wall between it. Sure, it's popped off. And into that chest. Melon farm is gathering tons of melon. I mean, far more than I could ever need. I just emptied it last night, and even from the few minutes I've been on here, I've got almost three more stacks of it there. Uses a fader time system, so whenever it gets activated there, got enough here just to delay the extend the pulse really and we've got this one which uh, well actually this one goes down here first I believe yeah and that activates the pistons pops it all up this one goes around here turns on the water water moves it all along goes in there then water is off water fades away and just after the water fades away the pistons all retract so plants are all safe Getting the timing on that was a bit of a nightmare because you know, the server time when you get a wee bit of lag, it's all gone. So you have to make sure there's a wee bit of a buffer space in the timer so that the plants don't get destroyed whenever the pistons go off. Now, usually you only grow one or two melons, so the timer might be close to going off. Um, let's have a look. Simple hopper timer. Uh, well, it's not a massive time. We'll have a quick look at the other stuff and probably be able to get back and catch that. As you remember the chickens up there, just laying away there. Got a chicken water elevator here. Cause I had a lot of chickens stored outside, so I just shifted them all in. And that's actually broken, I think. So I'm going to have to fix that at some point. Uh, let's see. A couple of dead chickens in there. Full of eggs. I think it was up five or six of these chests. There we are on that one at the minute. In fact. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, the way that's set up, I'm guessing somebody has taken some eggs. That's all right. I always keep my farms open to the public around the area anyway. This is my mm -hmm. cow breeder. As the standard design, I use a lot of the time. It's not fully automatic, but it's quite nice. You've got the pistons there. Whenever you're breeding them for cooking, you just breed them up there. Lure them all out by standing up here for a bit of wheat. All the babies fall down here, grow up, and cook. And cook off. If you want to breed them without them falling down, just extend the pistons. This is a new bit I've added just so I don't fall down here. In the Empire Town, you can teleport out, so I usually have a teleport sign there, but in here, mm -hmm. I want out and I haven't got those closed. I'm going to have to destroy something, and that's just not fun. So, we've only got three cows there at the minute. We're going to breed up to about eight before we start cooking them. That's the well, and let's see if we're close to activation on this, or if we've missed it already. And, yeah, we missed it. I'm going to try to accelerate that so you can see the function. Let's see. Got that. Um, I don't have a lot of inventory space. Just going to dump some of that in the chest around here. Been cleaning things up around the area. There's too many mobs and everything, so get rid of a lot of that. To restock the villagers in the iron farm because they despawned because of the entity limits in the server. Uh, Alright, so that's going to throw all that back. Oh, we haven't actually emptied that, let it empty first for the verses. Then we'll fill that in. And that's going to activate that. Fairly certain that should be pretty quick. Ah, here we go. Pistons up. Water out. Obviously, if there's melons, they'll flow straight down here. 
Water should turn off in a second here. There you go, water off. Water gone. Pistons down. Love that design. It's obviously quite messy at the minute because that was an experimental design. Very proud of that though. We'll head over to my uh, actual farm farm now. I need to eat some food. It's the normal well. We'll have a quick look there. Basically leads down to the sewer system I've been building underneath the entire town. Just stone brick tunnels onto the whole town. Leads between people's residences and wells and stuff like that. It's a nice little feature. Anyway, back over, head to the farm. Here we go, this is the entrance from my area. There's an entrance through the little sheep pen there as well. If we head up here, we'll see how the growth's going. It looks like we've got a fairly good growth, probably 90 some percent. We've got actually multiple layers, so I'll have a quick check. I think that's high enough that I can send a harvest down so you can see it in action. Show you the storage before we do that. It's basically standard item sorter through hoppers. I've actually got a double stream of hoppers onto the whole farm. It's just because they do clog up when you activate the free layers of things, you know, so I've done double layer of hoppers rather than doing a layer of hoppers at each level of the farm. I've got three levels to the farm that we're doing three levels of hoppers. And this way I don't have to do hopper tars and such as much. So it runs into a standard item sorter. I'm sure you've all seen that many times. And each section has three chests. So we've got carrots there. Just into two double chests of those. Potatoes should be into about three. Yeah, potatoes are well grown there. Wheat only got about half double chest, but I'm sure you all know that grows a bit slower. That's why we've got a full harvest of wheat in there at the minute. Seeds is... Yeah. Well, once we get this stock in from this, it'll be well into the double chests. Anything that's not in those goes around here. So poison potatoes, a couple of hoes, random torture. I'll take that. Some string and a rabbit hide. Probably from the rabbit infestation we had recently. One of the other members of the town decided to spawn rabbits in the sheep area. But they do not pay attention to the fence post things. So they're all coming out and heading over to the farm. And if one of those gets into the farm, he's just going to start stomping on all the plowed fields so let's activate this anyway but water all along there activates part of the empire servers is that the drops do sort of group together which is another reason why we have the double layer of hoppers because they all try to go down the same hoppers then and you see it's quite the harvest each one of this level is 45 long so you've got six by 45 there six by 45 there and two more 6 by 45s there. We started off a bit smaller. These top two layers are still on the smaller size. That's just 21 long, but still 6 by 21, 6 by 21, 6 by 21, 6 by 21. In time, I'm going to extend them all to 45, and I'm going to do another two levels over this side, so that's just going to be massive. At the minute, really, you get. Uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, when it was just. 6 by 21s it was full row and 4 more I think and obviously if a harvest of something like potatoes or carrots you get between 2 and 3 times that much so you're getting down to there down maybe into this row and that's per harvest so with the 45 long each level is more than doubled in size so you're getting a full double chest if stopped no problem this is a little sheep area. It's one of my more recent ads. I put a couple of steps in it just for aesthetics, really. I had this sandstone far, uh, sandstone path up to the farm before. I actually killed off a bunch of the sheep because there was just too many. Like I say, the villages were despawning because of entity limits. A lot of the dogs in this middle should be mine, but some of them belong to other people. I think don't think this one's mine. Oh, I'm trying to breed it. <laughs> no, that's not mine. Some general small animal farms. That's a new area of some new paths in case we get some new members to plant. They can build up their plots out there. This is sort of the entrance area. I didn't start down at the bottom because, as you can see at the minute, it's just a ladder and that's all the way from underground at the bottom of the ocean up past the clouds. It does take a little while to get up. 
Full the automatic chicken farm troops in before. We've got a baby in there, but because of the despawning mobs, we might not get that. It's only got four cooked chicken in there. Works great in single player and on your private residence in the Empire servers. This is uh, Drew's build. He's called it the Mount Olympus. It's built almost entirely out of quartz with a bit of cobblestone and mossy cobble. Very nice build. Very quartz intensive. Not very well lit. Kill that skeleton. That's him knocked off. Mm. Oh, I had a quick round to all the other people's places then. Uh, this is a tiny one Rachel over here. It's simple stone brick and cobble build. Even for the simplicity, very nice. She does good builds. Uh, let's see, it's her little farm in there. Now she's actually converted what I originally started off as a prank. I was raising chickens into her farm, but she found it too quickly. She's converted that into a regular sewer entrance down into our sewers, so we'll head down there and have a look. Uh, she's got water flows going both ways. This is not my standard sewer design, this is one of her own. If we head out here, we'll see my standard design. I just I like this tunnel design. You've got the steps either side, flat area there. Uh, at the moment, I've lost my depth strider, so I'm not going to try and go up that way. This is a well entrance here, just a standard little well. Just near the entrance to town, as you see. Uh, I think a good place to go from here is actually over to my skeleton farm. Uh, this is the secret entrance from my, my base here, so I'll go there for a quick peek. This is the button for activate from this side. It's a combination of pistons, slime blocks. Press that, and there we go, We've got a little stairway out. This is where I keep my horses, and my mutal cloud runner, and my white horse. Button there. Open and close this. This is where I actually lured all the chickens into the chicken farm from. There was a whole bunch of chickens here. I just opened that tunnel and they all flowed up there. So as I said, we'll go back over to my skeleton farm now. A couple of the other people have helped with some of the building and renovation. Mostly of the aesthetics. I built the main mechanics all myself. Basically this tunnel is obviously unfinished. Got the platform running all the way out here. I wanted a slightly different entrance to my skeleton farm. So once I found it, Noted down the coordinates, built this path all the way out, so we can just drop straight down into it. Got a tar of the Dior right there. Uh, I actually want to sort of show you that. I'll climb back up from inside. So I've got a nice little feature on the outside. This drops you straight down into the skeleton farm. Standard design, we've got a mob spawner, water tower there. It comes down here. Uh, I'm sure if we wait a minute we'll get one. I've got a switch here to turn it on and off. Once I'm sure we've got some spawned, I'll hit that so you can see that. Uh, come on. Alright, definitely some there now. Hit that. Now let's come on inside. Hit it again. The lights go off. So we've got one in there. I'm going to quickly jump up this little water elevator here. Uh, it's a little tricky. There we go. That's it. Just so you can see the outside. I like that got the white tar here. I might replace this cobble at some point, but that's basically where the skeleton is going. I've got a little glass tunnel on top. Hopefully time to well. Yep, there we go. So we get to watch the skeletons just going across the bottom there. And they fall down, left with one hit point. I just like that feature. There we go. So now we can just walk over here and punch him. And he's dead. Got a wee storeroom here. This is my AFK safe room. Because I tried FK him once and somehow I got killed. I don't know where the skeleton got me from, but he did. So I've got a switch, two iron doors closed, perfectly safe in here. Nothing can touch me. Uh, minecart wheel, this is what I had planned. Somebody else did a lot of the construction work though. I recently raised the ceiling just a bit because I wanted a bit more clearance. So we just hop on, fire ourselves over. Um, don't think there's much else to show. Uh, this appears about halfway on the ladder, so I don't want to bore you with a ladder climb. Um, you know what? I will. I haven't showed you a lot of the base. I want to do a quick run for it. I apologize for the slowness of this. At some point, we're going to put in a bit of a slime block elevator here. Maybe a slime block minecart one. We'll see. And there's my squid farm over there. Total squids caught so far? Zero. Yep, not the most effective, but I do have a big guardian farm out there. Another one of my other bases, and I have plenty of squids from that too. 
Oh, almost there. Uh, well, while we're going up here, you can see I've underlined a lot of the builds with half slabs, just for integrity. If we do get a random creeper, it will destroy everything then. Uh, da -da -da -da, and we're up. This uh, stone generator. Now you might be thinking, well, that's not much use, but I've got this torch shut off switch here. And apparently that's not working either. I don't know what the hell's happened there. Um, I don't know, I'll have to have a look at that later. Maybe it's just lag. Has been some lag issues on the server. And, uh, just in the last day or so. I don't know if it's me or just the server. Anyway, still some Halloween decorations up as you can see. This is the old iron farm. Behind that, the mob farm. Simple mob dropper system. Running through all the tree farms, that's the way up to the iron farm. Not going up there right now, it's a bit of a walk. I'm not sure what this build is and who built it. This is Highlander's castle. Trying to rival my own, I think. He did take actually some oh, oh, some inspiration for his floor design from my redstone ore. Uh, <coughs> got myself stuck. Go around the trees. Have a quick look there. So as you can see, he's inspired by my floor, but he's made his own design there. It's very nice. I like it. He's got this full automatic furnace system. I don't really do that because I just like to get the extra XP from actually taking the stuff out. This, I believe, is yep, Dee Dee's house. Very nice house. She's got a couple of pet small zombies in there. Some public utilities there. Obviously, I've got these over in my own base anyway. I've got your enchanting table. Uh, Green area. Right. Uh, who's near it? Uh, it's, uh, it's Monty's place. It's actually quite nice. I think he had some iron golems inside. And oh, who was this? Uh, see if we can find a sign. No, I don't think he's got a sign up at the minute. And his name eludes me. But he, he's a very nice builder. He had some nice lines which I really liked up front, but they're gone at the minute. This is the stable area. I believe that's my donkey actually. The rest don't belong to everybody else. Got an inside stable here. See, a few random horses around there. Uh, is there any chickens? A few weeks ago I just flooded this place with chickens for a laugh. Um, it looks like most of them are gone. Maybe one or two hiding, but I can't see any. Ah, here we go. The snow area. Where the snowmen live. It's just a fun little place someone built. This is a little platform someone built for small experimental builds and such. Little park area that one of our members built here. And a blank mob spawning platform if you want to go in and just, you know, chop mobs. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it there for here now. Yeah, hope you all enjoyed this tour. If there's anything you'd like to see, let me know. Uh, as you can see, there's a couple of streams of water flowing down there. I'll sort that out at some point. Anyway. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed it.